when discussing the legendary Commodore 64, something that often comes up is the difference between the Breadbin 64 and the 64C. And maybe the difference between like the silver label 64s and not silver label 64s, as well as like the difference between longboard 64Cs and shortboard 64Cs. But something that's almost never talked about are the different ROM revisions. First, this doesn't sound too interesting, but the more I dug into this topic, the more it's actually quite fascinating. So uh, that's what I'd like to talk about in today's video. So let's get right into it. video, I'd like to mention something. That's the Commodore 64 ROM is basically made up of three parts. Basic ROM, which is where the basic interpreter is stored. Character ROM, where the character ROM where all the Petsky characters are stored. And the kernel ROM, which is essentially the operating system that handles like I.O. routines and screen drawing routines and whatnot. We're mainly going to be looking at the kernel ROM since the other two ROMs basically were made the same throughout the Commodore 64's life. So here we are in a ROM 164, and a really easy way to see what ROM revision your 64 has is to peek the register 65408. On a ROM 1, that'll return 170. If you convert that to hexadecimal, it's AA for revision A. So another cool thing about ROM 1 machines is if we poke a character onto a part of the screen that hasn't had text on it since it was initialized, the default color is white instead of the light blue. This is because the Commodore 64 was originally going to have white text on blue, but since the video output of early model Commodore 64s was so bad, the white against the blue created some weird artifacting and it didn't look very good. So as a last minute change, they changed it to light blue on dark blue, which is not the greatest color combination. It's sort of a way of sweeping the problem under the rug. But anyway, everybody just has control too when they start up the Commodore 64. So the final thing I want to show you with ROM 1 machines is a bug in the scrolling routines. So if we go down a bit of a ways here, we're just going to type some random characters, also to the end of the line. And then if we hit backspace, we get a syntax error, and then a ready prompt. And actually the whole computer is locked up, so we can't really type anything. It just the whole computer locks up. Doing a soft reset will uh, remedy this, but if you don't have a reset button, this can be kind of annoying. So yeah, that's yet another issue that Silver Label Commodore 64 has had. So moving on to ROM 2 machines, uh, one of the biggest differences between ROM 2 machines and ROM 1 machines is ROM 2 machines support both PAL and NTSC, whereas ROM 1 machines only work in NTSC land. So on a ROM 2, if we peak 65408, it returns 0, which it would make more sense if it returns 2 or something, but 0 it is. And something really annoying about the uh, ROM 2 machines is if we uh, try to poke a character onto the area of the screen that hasn't had text on it since it was initialized, nothing shows up. There should be an A in the top corner of the screen. Well, there technically is, but the foreground color is the same as the background color, which is blue on blue, which is just... who thought of that? So in order to see it, we have to change the foreground color of that character cell. So if we poke that area in color memory to 5, which should change it to green, for example, we can now see the A. And as for the scrolling bug, well, from what I've read, it should still exist on ROM 2, but I was unable to recreate it. So, ROM 3 was sort of the last of the quote-unquote regular Commodore 64 ROM revisions, and it is uh, probably the best. Um, if we peak memory location 65408, it returns 3, which makes sense. And then if we poke a character onto the screen, it uh, defaults to the light blue, and the scrolling bug does not exist in this version. ROM 3 was probably the most popular Commodore 64 ROM revision. It was used in the later bread bins from around 84, 85, used in all of the 64Cs, as well as uh, the Commodore 128 running in 64 mode uses ROM 3. Now moving on to some of the more unusual and oddball machines, we've got the uh, Educator 64, or I like to call it the Pet 64. This is basically a Commodore 64 and a Commodore PET case, and 
who sold to the education market. So booting up, as you can see, the default startup screen is a bit different. It says Commodore 4064, which aligns with the PET numbering scheme. Um, and it doesn't say how much RAM is free, as well as it's just in black and white, because the PET 64 had a green monochrome display. If we peek 65408, we get 100. And one really weird thing about this ROM revision is if we try to change the background or border colors, it actually won't let us. It'll just keep changing it back to black. It's like there's a routine that runs in the background constantly resetting those registers to zero. So uh, I was curious if this was only a thing in basic. So I wrote this little uh, program in assembly language and uh, here's what it does on a normal uh, Commodore 64. It turns the border green and the background white and then you have like hello world and a rainbow and here it is running on the uh, PET64. As you can see the border and background are black but it does let you have different color text. So that's very interesting. I should also mention as the pet, that the PET64 has the same uh, characteristics when initializing the screen as ROM2 machines, where the background is initialized to the same as the foreground. Moving on to the Commodore SX64, this was the portable version of the Commodore 64. It was actually the first portable computer to have a color display. As you can see, it actually has no uh, cassette loading routines as well as the default colors are different and the startup message is different. If we peek 65408, it returns 67. The entire screen is initialized to dark blue. I should also mention the Commodore 64 GS game system. It uh, doesn't have any basic in ROM, but when you turn it on, it has this cool little animation telling you to put a cartridge in while it's powered off. And uh, anyway, that's just about it for different Commodore 64 ROM versions. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.